Welcome back to the Making a Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa podcast, where we have real conversations about what it takes to run a successful business. Thank you for joining us as we share our day-to-day successes and even more importantly, failures and mistakes. Listen in as we host some of our peers, colleagues, and other experts in the field. We hope you enjoy today's episode. All right. Hi, I'm Pat Toronto and welcome back to the making of a multi-million dollar podcast. And today I have just an amazing woman on the podcast with me, V. Ibrahim. And I'm just so grateful you're here. Thank you. Thank you. I, um, you know, we've met a few times over the years through Cyton meetings and, um, and, you know, I've just had such just found so much joy in watching you and your team grow. Um, And I, looking through some of the information that I've been diving through before we did the podcast today, I'll have to tell you like your background blows my mind. It's just, there's, I mean, what a journey you've been on. So I'm excited for you to share more about your journey. Um, and, and I'm excited to get to know a little bit more about you. And so just kind of real briefly, I mean, learning that you worked, um, as a surgical tech in the army for eight years and you worked as a social worker in San Francisco. I mean, you, you run this business and you teach yoga on the weekends. I was just like, wow, that is amazing. So, um, you know, it with kind of looking back at your journey, um, maybe share like a highlight, you know, a highlight within one or all of those. I'd love to hear anything that you'd like to share, but you know, just so many different pieces to where, you know, where you are today. Well, I want to say thank you so much for having me on your podcast. It's a great honor and it's, I've listened to the other ones and it's been amazing to hear everyone's journey and also yours. So with everything, I think, leading up to where I am today, the one thing that I can say is the persistence uh, that is key to understand your goal and to make sure that you know the path uh, and staying focused and knowing what you want and soliciting support along the way if you need it. And all of the different uh, paths that I've taken every single experience has taught me that if we don't ask questions and we don't get curious and we don't want more for ourselves and when I say more I'm talking about learning experiencing growing uh, we will not be able to reach our full potential and all of those experiences have helped me uh, with this new business venture that I'm on. You know, I think that's so important because I think many people kind of get stuck in their world and they're afraid to feel embarrassed to ask the question or, you know, fear like what the response will be or the judgment might be. And I mean, I've certainly done that along the way, you know, and then I realized, well, what am I doing? I'm just limiting myself and limiting others around me. But, you know, being brave enough to, to feel vulnerable and to ask those questions and to find the help. I mean, I was listening to another podcast recently, huge fan of podcasts. <laughs> Matt always makes fun of me. He's like, oh, what podcast did you learn that from today? You know, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it's, it's just the, the, the growth and, and putting your feeling vulnerable is actually a brave way to be, you know, and when you put yourself out there, um, you know, there's so much that can come back. And so I love, you know, looking at like, what questions can we ask? Oh, and where I was going with that too, actually, the, the part that I was remembering is pay for speed. You know, I love this concept, pay for speed, mm-hmm. whether it's like, the training, the onboarding, the hiring process, you know, because I think hiring is such an important part of the practice. And I know you do too. Um, and finding people to help us with that and paying for speed. And I just love that just kind of really simplified it for me. Um, and so, you know, when, when you look at, you know, being a social worker and going back to, you know, here we are, we know like our team is so important as the most important part of our business. You know, were there pieces of being a social worker and living in San Francisco that have helped you with kind of your hiring process or managing teams? I mean, I'm not sure exactly what you did as a social worker, so I, I may not be connecting any of the dots there, but just curious, you know, if, if, if you pull any of those skills. Uh, You are actually spot on. I think most social workers, if not all, 
uh, understand that connecting with their client is important. So I think that when we are in this world of business, we also have to learn to connect to our team, our customers, our patients, whoever that might be. So that is a huge aspect of social work is being able to hone in on what the issue is, helping the client define what that is, and to also have clarity around that. And then most importantly, how do we help the clients connect to resources that's available to them? So uh, you start to learn all aspects of human behavior, human need, uh, desires, things that are not so desirable. <laughs> uh, behavior is huge. So you think about how people respond or react or react to things and all of those skills come into play uh, when we are dealing with business and also dealing with day-to-day uh, -day issues, staffing issues, maybe patient concerns, client concerns. And with social work, I was truly able to learn so much about mental health, so much about addiction, but also really learning how to listen without having that internal conversation uh, going on in my head about what am I doing today? What am I having for lunch? So learning to be present is something that is truly uh, something that I learned in uh, being a social worker. Because if you miss tiny details, then you may not be able to fully help your client and you might miss out on an opportunity, right? And when we talk about opportunities, we talk about, I mean, in business, we talk about missed opportunities or we talked about opportunities that we grow from. and. I think those key elements from social work, which is the listening part, but also looking for that opportunity to help your client out really translates into uh, what I'm doing now as well. So maybe share a little bit about what your day-to-day -day looks like. What is your, you know, your main role? And I know that, but like, you know, what, what is your main role and, and what is your day-to-day, -day, you know, what, what does today look like tomorrow? You know, what keeps you busy? <laughs> Wow, uh, I think you know, Kathy, that when you are a business owner and you're a mom and you are a wife and a parent and everything, your day is always full. So my day-to-day -day is starts with the kids, we get to work and uh, at our practice, we have morning meeting every day at 8.30, and this is an opportunity for everyone on the team to be front-facing with each other, talk about scheduling issues, talk about things that come up, talk about you know, a great moment that they might have had with the patient or an interaction. Uh, we talk about any issues that might have come up um, the day before. So we try to really keep that to about five or 10 minutes to get the day started. And then after that, I usually go through the schedule. I constantly am looking ahead at uh, what we need to do, what can we do better, uh, take care of any patient issues. So right now, because we're still a small business, I pretty much run the operations. Um, and I have a great HR uh, consulting firm that I work with. And they have been phenomenal in helping me create the protocols, create the standards and expectations of our company. And it's changed everything. So I think when you have standards and policies in place, especially in a small business, it really does set the tone for what we want excellence to look like, what we want the standards to look like. And truly what I do is I make sure that all those things uh, are done on a daily basis. Um, I do have a great team. My team is small, uh, but we are definitely growing because we've expanded. And right now it's all about hiring uh, the perfect, excuse me, not the perfect person, but I would say the ideal candidate who would love to join our team and who's passionate about being excellent and also uh, who loves to take care of other people. And so do you have help with, does the HR company that you work with, do they help you as a recruiting company as well? Or are you doing the recruiting? So they do help with recruiting. Uh, we do everything on Indeed and that has been the easiest for us. And we live in upstate New York. So we don't have a huge talent pool, I would say. 
just because we do uh, have two big hospitals here. And I think with the pandemic, it's really affected how healthcare workers view the job environment. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are shifting in terms of what they want for, from an employer and what kind of you know culture they're looking to be in. So that is one of the biggest challenges because we're small. Uh, we have a lot of people who are coming from bigger hospitals and uh, everything that they were getting at the hospital does not translate to what they're getting from us. But what we hope to achieve in our interviews is to let them understand that the culture here is different and that we do demand excellence and we expect you to be present. And we want you to have pride in what you do. Uh, in terms of the HR works, they definitely screen all of our applicants. So they do all the phone screening and then they send us the candidates that uh, we will interview in person. And, well, that's a big piece right? of it. It's a big piece. Yes. I think maybe so she right go now, through the hospital with like a tray of Botox and be like, so <laughs> you guys want to switch it up? Like, <laughs> forget the cookies and the muffins, you know, it's like <laughs> filler and Botox. <laughs> I have to say that our patients are so sweet and we get so many treats all the time yeah. from our patients. Oh, I mean to pull in like recruits, you know, in the hospital. <laughs> Bring in the the um, you know, the nurses and the nurse practitioners this way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm well. So looking at your team, and you know, so once you bring your team members on, and looking at creating this culture and establishing the center of excellence, you what have you found in those moments of whether it's in the hiring process or once they're on board? Like, how do you really focus and keep that up? Training. Training. I learned that from you. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm a huge fan. Yeah. <laughs> if there's anything that I took away from your talk and, and also from Matt's talk is training is crucial. Training is key. And without proper training and constant and consistent training, we cannot expect our staff to be at their best. And training is a discipline. I mean, when with any discipline, we have to practice and it's a daily practice. So training is important. I try to uh, conduct trainings all the time, whether it's about providing excellent care or how we even apply sunscreen after we finish a laser treatment or how we speak to the patients, how we greet the patients. I mean, our front desk person gets compliments every single day about how they were greeted when they walked into the practice. So that really speaks to our training and, and also us reminding each other that sometimes we may not feel our best, but we always put our best foot forward when we're at work. And it also comes from the team. And this is something, again, in your presentation that you brought up, right? It's all about who you work with and lifting up your teammates. And that's that's really important. Hi, everyone. It's Kathy Toronto. Did you know the making of a multi-million dollar med spa podcast is one piece of a whole training company? As longtime members of the aesthetic industry, my husband, Matt, and I have created Mint Aesthetics to provide dedicated training to aesthetic professionals across the country. Whether you prefer hands-on training, immersive virtual sessions, or the flexibility of online e-courses, Mint has a training option for you. Elevate your skills with our expert-led hands-on training. We will gain practical expertise and refine your techniques. Dive into our immersive virtual training sessions led by industry experts right from the comfort of your own space. Looking to expand your knowledge base? Our online e-courses provide a comprehensive curriculum designed to enhance your expertise at your own pace. And for those seeking to take their business to the next level, our specialized business consulting services offer tailored strategies for growth and success. Learn how you can take your aesthetic skills to the next level at mintaesthetics.com. Who better than a yoga instructor to lead the team? It's like, 
oh my gosh, this is like my dream. I really was reading through and I thought, you know, I want to do that. I'd like to teach yoga or bar or sculpt or something like that on the weekends. Like what, you know, you get your, I sort of get your workout in, right? I mean, the, the instructor doesn't always get as good of a workout, but just to be in that, I mean, how, how have you managed that with everything that you're going, you know, kind of got going on? So I used to teach in person. And then when COVID hit, I went to Zoom. So all the students that I had would log on to Zoom and we kept it up. So every Sunday, unless I'm away for work or something else comes up, uh, I have my class from 9.30 to 10.45. And I have my core students that show up and we've been together for the last three years, coming on four years. And it's worked out really well because as you know, with Zoom, you can you can be virtually anywhere. So sometimes I'll be away and I'll be able to teach a class through Zoom. And it's and it's great because it keeps me consistent with my teaching, but also uh, keeping up with the schedule, but also providing students with their practice. Oh, that's so beautiful. I mean, you know, so many hard things through COVID, but so many great things, you know, I mean, yes. it's really it kind of forced me out of my box in a number of areas too. And it's just, I look back and I think I'm so glad like that we now have shifted and we do, we have, we, we kind of saw ways, new ways to work and that ended up now, you know, it, we able to go back and do some of the things before, thankfully as well, but you know, that we can incorporate both of them into our day-to-day -day and just the combination has been even better. Exactly. So, um, well, I'd love, you know, you mentioned that you do these, you know, at, every morning you have a meeting for five to 10 minutes. And, um, you know, I go back to this a lot because, you know, we host, we do a bi-monthly, but, you know, you, you say daily and I think, wow, I mean, the daily, I really, I really like that. Even if it's just like five to 10 minutes, because in my mind, I'm thinking a meeting has to be, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. And when you said the five to 10 minutes, I thought, you know, that is definitely doable. You know, come five to 10 minutes. And so do you open your door after the meeting is over or could your patients be coming in as you're finishing up your meeting? How does that work? We always have our front desk person there. So they typically don't join us. It's usually clinic and then the rest of the admin team that comes back. And we use Microsoft Teams all the time. So if there's anything that we need to communicate to our front desk person, uh, we will just Teams him. Um, so we try to rotate with the admin team. So maybe a month here, a month there, uh, depending on what the need is. But truly the meeting in the morning is to get everybody on the same page. And I actually got this idea from uh, where my kids go to school. Mm -hmm. So they started, at this amazing school and they started off in nursery and I would go in there uh, I remember one time I went in there and there was a sign that said morning meeting and they had all of these these uh time uh cards on there that would indicate when they would be doing what so let's say from 8 to 8 10 they had morning meeting and then 8 30 to 8 50, they had recess or something like that. So it really organized the day for the children. And it also gave them uh, a sense of what to expect. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, this is amazing. Why don't we have morning meeting? But also in the military, when I was training uh, and I was in the OR, we had morning meeting. So before any cases start, we'd have morning meeting, we would talk about the cases and then who was going where and then everyone disperses. So that's kind of where I got the, the idea. And also we share quotes, like positive quotes in the morning as well. So that's a part of our morning meeting to Beautiful. get the day started. I, I have often, you know, I think there's a number of surgeons that I've worked with or known throughout the years, and it is common for, for that team to have a morning meeting, but just in this conversation, you know, I think why not have the five to 10 minute, a beautiful quote to start the day. Like, let's have a great day. Let's take care of each other. Let's take care of our clients. Is there anybody that's coming in that we need to give extra special care to? I mean, that really can be done in a very short period of time. And what a different 
to your words, like expectation or, you know, appreciation that's given out to that day just to get it started. I love that. Um, one other thing I wanted to touch on um, that I think is so important in what you said is that, you know, so oftentimes in business, I think we get so inundated with the day to day, you know, what's going on today, how are we, you know, what, what our business is today. And you had mentioned one of the main things that you do is focus on the future. You know, you look to the future of the business and, um, and, you know, I, it's such a good reminder that we, you know, obviously we need to know the business that we're in, but what is the business to the future? Where are we, where do we want to be in a year or five years or 10 years? You know, and maybe it's starting at the 10 year and then the five year and working back to the one year and working to now. And, um, and so any tips for that, any way that you've organized that, or you think about that, or, um, I mean, I, I just, I love that idea, you know, kind of helping people get out of this moment and thinking about the bigger picture when, you know, on a daily basis, there's so many things that are pulling us into this moment. How do we keep looking towards the future? Write it down. That is the old fashioned way. And I've come to that time and time again, if you don't write it down, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Because in your head, it'll stay in your head. But once you clarify a goal and you actually write it down, you do have to go back and revisit. Um, and then you also have accountability partners. Like I have a performance coach that I work with. And we talk about these goals all the time. We look at projections. Uh, I talk to my husband about it. And we always are looking forward to what's next and what do we do. And I write everything down. Because when you're mired in the day-to-day, -day, you forget about the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're in full operations mode, you come home and, and all you want to do is sit down and relax. And when you get that opportunity to go back and revisit your notes and revisit your goals, then you're able to say, okay, what else can I do? Where else can I plug in? What do I need to change? What do I do differently? I love that. Thank you. I mean, the journaling, I mean, it's more than journaling, but kind of journaling, you know, I, I think I would have to say that it's not complete journaling. <laughs> <laughs> it journaling. is. I mean, it's been written down. <laughs> is it anything that's written down can be considered journaling? I don't know. That's, that's my humble opinion. <laughs> I did recently, uh, I did recently purchase a remarkable and it is, it's been remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Matt got me one. I've been wanting it and I started using it and I've just got to um, figure out a, cute, a couple little things um, to make it a little bit more efficient. So maybe I should do a little remarkable class with you. You can teach me the efficiency of it. I would say the one thing that saved me is to create all the different notebooks mm -hmm. in there. So let's say you have one for your podcast or you have one for your next teaching yoga venture so you keep all those notes in that notebook and you could have I don't know 50 notebooks within this one electronic notebook and so that's how I keep track of everything and I write everything down as it comes and it, and I am the type of person that loves to write everything down and it is so much easier because I carry around this thin little remarkable and not two different notebooks because I don't want to mix things up. I'm going back to my remarkable. I'm going to send you a text in my notebook. <laughs> 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 oh, well, so is there anything that just like makes you really excited about this industry right now? Anything new that's coming up or? There's so many opportunities and so many different things. Aesthetics has so much to offer. There is a never ending world of what you're able to do when it comes to beauty, right? It's not just about beauty, but it's also about health. And it's about uh, how do we achieve health? How do we achieve beauty? And there are so many mediums, there are so many different modalities of treatment that that is available and out there. And I wish that I had all the time in the world to learn about all the different treatment modalities and all the different devices that are out there. Uh, certainly, we have Cyton in our office. And even that, I feel there's so much to learn about what their, uh, the capabilities are, how you treat different uh, skin types and skin tones and different uh, issues. 
And like I said, if I had all the time, I would, that's all I would do. I would just look up all these things and see what works the best. And most importantly, I would like to try all of it. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we have to, isn't that a requirement anyway? (laughs) Yes. So all the Saitan uh, products, uh, modalities that we have, I've I've tried probably 80% of them and it works amazing. So when patients come in and they say, well, your skin looks really great. I always tell them, well, I do work at a dermatology office. I better look like this. (laughs) As an aesthetics professional, you know how hard it can be to operate a clinic, onboard team members, improve your treatment techniques and keep clients happy. The stress of it all can be a lot to handle. Let Mint Aesthetics take some of that off your shoulders. We offer a range of training options designed with your success as a central focus. From e-courses to hands-on training to business consulting, we have the tools you need to prosper in your business. Start with an online e-course before booking a hands-on training. Supplement your learning with virtual immersion courses. However you want to learn, we will be here to support you. Register online or contact us today at mintaesthetics.com. Don't get overwhelmed. Get serious about your success. Get mint trained. I mean, you've done such a great job of um, combining the technologies because I've, you know, I've heard uh, so much about your practice at the meetings and how those treatments are stacked and utilized and combined. And, you know, I'm such a big believer in the combination therapy to get the best result. And especially in a clinic like ours, which is very different than yours. I mean, we have 16 team members that are using the technology. And so really number one is safety, of course. And then number two is like, how can we get great results? And, you know, with, with teaching so many and bringing so many in to do the treatments, you know, looking at an approach of like, you know, BBL plus Moxie just gets a better result together. And you're less likely to want to like push the bounds of BBL when you know you're going to be layering Moxie on top, you know, you're able to do a little slightly, not say, not totally conservative, but more conservative treatment and layer Moxie on top to get this better, you know, the better result. And so I just feel like you guys have done such a great job with that and sharing that knowledge you know, all over taking the time to do that has made such an impact. I hear about your clinic all the time with the clinics that come in and train with me. So I have to say thank you for that as well. Cause I know taking those weekends oh, away you. from your kids, you know, I know that's, that's um, difficult. And so um, it really is making a big impact. I'm really glad to hear that. Thank you. Um, okay, well, so just, you know, maybe, is there anything else you want to share? Like, cause you know, in the growth of a business and, um, you know, I, you, your business is a little bit earlier on ours is a little bit down the road, but I think many of the things that we encounter are still similar. I mean, in terms of like finding an amazing team and keeping them and creating that culture and, you know, as, as you grow, I mean, there's more of that to maintain, but what, are there any moments along the way that was like a big aha or a big learning moment, maybe a struggle that turned into grow, you know, I mean, what is it that, you know, anything that you can think of that you'd like to share? That is a challenging question because I still feel like we're so new to the business and we're in year four and we're learning so much about how to manage a business, how to manage staff, how to empower staff, how to create training that provides them with the opportunities to learn and to grow. Um, I would say that the biggest learning moment for me is having that connection with my staff. So when you make time to connect with your staff and you make time to connect with um, who they are as a person, uh, what their dreams are, what challenges they have, and you recognize them for who they are also outside of work, um, it creates a lot of trust and then you can go from there. One of the other challenges, though, is when you run a business, as you know, 
you can either think purely on the business side uh, as it pertains to profit, revenue, all of those things. But then when you have to think about the human side, you have to be able to find that balance so that you can run a business that is successful, that is based upon um, people's motivations and willingness to be there um, and also what their potential is, but then also how do we drive the business forward uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in all the ways, uh, not just uh, revenue or profit, but also how do we create impact uh, in the community and also in the world? Well, I am such a big believer in that. You know, I think earlier in my career, I was very, um, you know, in this thought of it was more on the business side um, because it, it was what I was taught, whether it was in school or wherever, kind of along the way, um, like business is that, you know, is work is at work. And um, the older I get and the longer I'm in this, I've realized I was so wrong in so many parts of that, that our team, I mean, it, you know, it's, it is the most important thing. It is what has built our business. And so that just like you said, to find the connection is, has been so huge and has been such a gift to me. You know, I mean, I have friends within our business and that is such a gift to me that they're, you know, that we are on that bus together, moving in that direction together. And mm -hmm. um, it doesn't feel so lonely, you know? I mean, it, it actually brings so much joy to my life. Um, but I will say that the times where we do have someone that we either need to let go or moves on is more painful, you know? It definitely and, is. You know, and, and, um, and so, you know, that part always makes me emotional because it really does pull at me. And I, you know, I, I have to step back and say, I've got to make, you know, we need to make the, the decision that's best for the team, you know, the big picture for the team. And, and so when I'm able to kind of step back out of that and say, you know, as personal as I want it to be, um, and how painful it can be, you know, it has to be about the overall family and the overall team. And that helps me to, to see the light, <laughs> you You're know, absolutely it is, right. it's hard, you know, it definitely is. It's, it's not easy to let someone go because you think about their livelihood. You think about how it's impacting that and that you are responsible for this on some level and it's never a good feeling. Right. Right. Um, I will say though, in the times where we've had, you know, the one that kind of stirred the pot and even in the moment, it was like, oh, this is hard. You know, this is a big decision. Once that, that person is gone, it's like the whole energy of the clinic lifts and you feel it. It's lighter, it's happier. And, um, and, you, and, and I, I will say it's like the quicker, the, the faster we do that, you know, the better it is, even as, as difficult as that can be. So, well, thank you for that. I really appreciate you sharing. I know that's thank always you. a difficult topic to talk about. And, um, and so is there anything else you've thought about when we, you know, kind of listening to the podcast in the past or thinking about coming on today that you'd like to share? I love the one about the husband and wife uh, duo, especially because you and Matt are, are, are the duo as well, the dynamic duo. And it's great to see how uh, the, these intimate relationships then transform into these business relationships and how do you navigate through all of that? How do you find balance and how do you make sure that when business is business and then you have your romantic time? So I think this is something that I've recognized and, and I don't know if it's because I'm experiencing this with my husband that I feel like I am seeing other couples doing business mm -hmm. together. So this is an absolutely fascinating um, experience, I would say, in terms of understanding how we navigate uh, through challenges and through wins and successes with our partner. And it changes so much because when you feel successful and when you connect on so many different levels with your partner, uh, I think that there's so much more joy and 
the joy is exponential because there's two of you radiating this joy. <laughs> and whether it's motivation, whether it's enthusiasm, um, when you're both on the same page, it's, it's incredible. So that magic I also see in you and Matt, and it's, it's so inspiring. Oh, well, so any tips on working with your spouse? <laughs> I think, you know, our industry has got to be, I mean, I haven't looked at any study on this or anything, but it has got to be the highest of like husband and wife teams that are working together. And so any tips? I would say keep the balance and make sure that you have time set aside for uh, you as a couple or you as parents, um, you as individuals, because we can definitely talk about work at work and then you come home and there's so many things that you have to talk about and discuss and where does it end? So you have to have boundaries around that and you have to make sure that, okay, at this time we stop talking about work. So I personally would like to not talk about work after about 7.30 at night. I'd like to wind down. I like to spend time with the kids, read, do the dishes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the dishes, the laundry. And yes, all of those things that take me away from the work day so that I can focus on home life and focus on other things that you know we need to talk about whether it's planning a vacation, maybe, I don't know, talking about what we want to do in our spare time <laughs> or another hobby we might want to pick up. I don't know. There's, there's so many other, other things outside of work that I think are important um, for us to discuss. And keeping that balance, I think, is, is truly what helps things uh, be a little bit more manageable. I love that. I giggled because Matt and I, a couple of years ago, were like, let's pick up guitar. And so, <laughs> so we both have guitars and they have not been picked up since we bought them, you know, but I told him recently, I was like, Hey, don't give up on that. That might be, not might be right now, but maybe in six months or a year, you never know. We might be yes. playing guitar together someday. So I'm keeping those guitars. I would love to see the both of you on stage with your guitars. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't think so. I mean, maybe if we're like lips play acting like we're playing it, but there's another song playing in the background, you know, we'll see. <laughs> Oh, Levine, well, thank you so much for being on today. I just can't, you know, just sharing all of the information and your background and experiences and and um, helping to guide our path. So thank you again for, for getting on with me today and spending the time to do this and to share with our listeners, you know, a little bit about you and your practice and your successes. So um, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, thank you so much, Kathy. I really appreciate your time and it's been such a pleasure. Thank you. You bet. I'll see you soon. Maybe at a, a, a Cyton meeting in the future. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for listening to today's episode. We would love it if you left a review to help other providers and clinics find us. Also, if you want more information about anything we discussed in this episode, check out our show notes. Until next time, this has been the Making a Multi-Million Dollar Med Spa Podcast.